I'm John Batchelor, Larry Kudlow, my colleague and co-host, CNBC's Kudlow Reports and Kudlow Radio on the weekend. And we continue with our guest and uh, the distinguished professor, John Taylor, George Shultz Senior Fellow in Economics at the Hoover Institution as well. Professor, the uh, middle class. Larry has a very focused question about policy in the middle class. I also want to mention that it is a revelation to me in these many years of talking with Larry about how the Laffer curve and Reaganomics worked in the 1980s, that here in the 21st century, the idea of reducing tax margins to generate revenue for the government is not accepted by younger policy workers. Do you find that as well in your classroom, Professor, that people reject the, the facts of how a lower, a lower margins generate money for the government? You know, my students don't reject it. They're the you know the freshmen and the college students. They they buy into it uh, because I think they see it. I think it's hard to convince people who've been set in their ways for long periods of time. They got their old kind of Keynesian models that don't take incentives into account sufficiently. So that's where you see the resistance. But I think that the young younger people um, see it quite clearly. I mean, it's funny, John. Just on this point. Uh... If you if you grow the economy, if you expand the income base of the economy, because more people are working and generating income, that of course you pay taxes on the greater income, and that throws off revenues. Now, why is a growing economic pie throwing off revenues so hard to understand? That's what I don't understand. I think sometimes people don't want to understand. You know, they think we should have higher taxes for one reason or another, and. And the benefit sometimes you is well, I don't care if capital gains causes more capital and more jobs. It's not fair. So that that mentality affects your thinking, unfortunately. Middle class workers, Larry, you have a very yeah, good let question. Me, let me shift gears. A very good article today by a column by David Brooks. I agree with some of it and some of it I don't. But in fact, John, what can be done to help the plight of the middle class where their after inflation, after tax incomes appear not to be holding up. They're not catching, you know, they're losing, they're falling behind the curve, and it's having a very difficult effect on morale and, and cynicism and so forth. What should be done to help the middle class? I think anything that you can do to encourage people to hire, to give people incentives, to create more jobs, and that's what we've been talking about for the last few minutes. That that's creates the jobs, and it, and it raises incomes. And by the way, you're talking about productivity. Productivity is how much workers produce in a given period of time. That's the key to higher wages. Higher productivity growth generates higher wages over time and across countries. Very powerful. In your view, is there an expanded role for government to target middle class? That's part of the debate. We hear this a lot uh, from Washington and elsewhere. I think in the area of education, government needs to clean up its act, quite frankly. We've had uh, decline in quality of schools, and that affects people's productivity. That affects their ability to earn and, 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 and make progress. So to the extent that we can improve our education system, and that doesn't mean more government almost always. It means freeing up charter schools, uh, vouchers, et cetera. So what about the Democratic view, that you raise taxes on the rich, on the successful earners, on the people at the top, and then you redistribute that income to middle-income people, either through tax breaks or greater spending or somehow give them benefits. What about that view? Oh, it, it doesn't work. It, you know, if you, if you penalize the people who are trying to innovate, trying to create jobs, trying to bring in new ideas, increase productivity, if you penalize them, then that's not going to help the people who benefit from those jobs, who benefit from the productivity that is created. So it just doesn't work. People have to look at what works, but not have wishful thinking. I, I want to give it. an example of what the professor means. Facebook, everybody knows the platform and the success of that, but recently I reported that not Facebook is hiring, but uh, companies are being formed that take advantage of the Facebook platform in order to build their own businesses, and these companies are hiring around the world, not just in California. There's an example of IT productivity that generates jobs that is not part of the Facebook bottom line, but it certainly is the growth of the, of the best kinds of jobs, throwing off more businesses. Is that correct, Professor? Absolutely. And, you know, another great example is just think of eBay. Think of, you know, eBay 
computer-oriented firm. But think of all the businesses that are out there using eBay, new businesses, because it was a way to sell their goods. So absolutely. And, and studies have shown that sometimes these technologies take a while to have their impact because people have to figure out how to use them. And your example, eBay, are, are, are good ones. Is that what happened in the 80s and 90s? We, we hatched and incubated all these technologies. Now, these were hardware technologies, software technologies especially, and then we got into the Internet game, and then came the explosion in productivity and wages, and then came the balanced budgets. I mean, does that, does that sort of timeline work? Yeah. In fact, I refer to, to Dale Jorgensen in some of my writings recently, and that's exactly what he's found, is you had these ideas going up, boiling up in the 80s, and people figuring out how to apply them, how, how to make it work, and that took some time, but, but that, that's, that's done and it's being done, so we've got over that hurdle. What about keeping the inflation rate near zero and using the Taylor rule, which you invented now? Tim Pawlenty, talking about him, he was very critical of uh, Bernanke's easy money policies in his speech at the University of Chicago. John, it seems to me inflation is the cruelest tax of all on the middle class. Is that true, and how can we avoid it? Well, it's true because people don't aren't sophisticated enough to work around it as as higher income people, people in the financial markets can do. So it is, it is an unfair tax. To work around it, to prevent it, is you need sound monetary policy, and I think we've drifted away from that uh, in recent years. I I think it's been a cause of a lot of our problems in the crisis, even. So so I think it's important, and I'm glad that uh, Governor Pawlenty is mentioning that, and and others, Paul Ryan as well, that we need to get back to sound monetary policy. That's a, a key element of, of a reform plan to, to make the country better. John Taylor uh, references the uh, jo- Dale Jorgensen, who with his colleagues Mun Ho and Kevin Steerall have published a piece about 2.5% growth per year in the 95 to 2005 period because of IT productivity, because the foundations turn into businesses that are generating around the world and it can be done again. That's published on the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. John Taylor of the Hoover Institution, Larry Kudlow of the Kudlow Reports at CNBC and Kudlow Radio on the weekend. I'm John Batchelor. <laughs>